guys, Shea Conley from HowToWrench.com. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to replace a broken fuel inlet or just one that's damaged like in the case of ours. Uh, just from old age, the plastic was starting to crack. Uh, wasn't even all the way broke, but definitely wanting to prevent problems for the future. You get this old plastic, you know, you've taken it on and off enough, it's going to crack or fatigue. So. Not only am I going to tell you the resource of where to find it, Drag Specialties, our friends over there, you guys might know them as Parts Unlimited, has a replacement fuel inlet nipple. It would be challenging for some people to put off if you haven't dealt with interference fits before. You know, especially for this carburetor because we have, it has to be at a certain angle too so that we can clear things to put the fuel line on and the, the air cleaner and then this cutoff valve. And let's get started and I'll show you the footage I took while I replaced that. First off, as you can see, this one's pretty cracked up, actually all around the body here. It's, now, it wasn't leaking, to be honest here, but it's only going to get worse. And especially you think about taking that fuel line on and off. When I pushed this around, I was able to get those lines to flex, which means that, you know, even with enough vibration or anything, it could ultimately fail. So we're just going to go ahead and make it right, right now before there's any problems. One of the first things we want to do though, is we need to, since this is not a swivel mount, we need to come up with some type of relationship of where this sits as it was you know, delivered to you from the customer. You can see it's not straight up and down. If I put that straight up and down, I'm going to have some air filter problems. So I'm going to take a measurement and get some reference lines here of where I want to install this. As you compare the new ones, they're exactly the same height. Let's do that now. So as you can see, I just take a veneer caliper and a straight edge and come up with a measurement. Then just take a pair of pliers and break that plastic off. You can see that plastic there. It's pretty brittle. I mean, when it gets that old and discolored like that, where we couldn't see is that it was cracking all around here. And it just, sometimes you gotta trust your mechanic on trying to avoid future problems. A fuel leak that would just start dripping would be you know, quite a hazard there. So, like I said, uh, anytime we can go ahead and improve this uh, for a little amount of money, that's a great idea. So now the next thing, this guy's going to be in here pretty good. So we want to go ahead and think about how we're going to get that out of there. I'm going to take my index set and step it up and just slowly get this out of here. And what that'll do is it'll help me not put any stress on this boss here on the carburetor. I attempted real lightly to try and see if this would move at all and it doesn't want to, it had a really good tight fit. So we're gonna go ahead and just slowly step that out of there so we can get it ready to take this one here. So let's do it. All right, as you'll see, I, I go through about three different drill bits to step that up to size. The other thing I can't stress enough is to use lube to uh, just take your time with this. Just walk it up. You want to keep that drill real nice and straight too. If you get crooked and bore that crooked, you're going to hurt the carburetor itself. But just take your time, size it up, stop and check your work every once in a while, and you'll have good success. Watch that brass fuel nipple start to rotate there. This could be disastrous. Ooh, look at what we did. How fantastic. I see why I went slow. If I would have kept going, that would have sat and bore out this hole. So baby steps, baby steps. As you can see, that's a pretty dang uh, tight fit there. I'm going to dry ice this. If you've never worked with dry ice before, I tell you, it's dangerous. Do not want to touch it with your bare hand. Uh, let's see what temperature we're at here. I can't even get it to read. So I've had that sitting on there for probably a good 20 minutes and not even directly on the dry ice. I've had it just insulated between plastic. Carburetor's ambient temperature here, 66 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and let that do more of its thing. And I'm going to go ahead and heat the body of this carb up. I've got my caliper already waiting, ready to go back together. And that's where I brought my temp gun out. Now you got to remember, I don't have any guts in here. I have no rubber parts in the carb whatsoever. This cold temperature, I'm getting about 9,000 interference fit. Alright, after squaring it up, you'll see we use a C-clamp and go ahead and start to press it down in there. You're going to see me stop and measure multiple times. I mean, you know that old saying, you know, measure twice, cut once. 
And then there I was dressing it with a file to create a little flatter edge because that clamp just kept wanting to slip around. And then I uh, had to make some corrections, as you can see there. And then you'll see I reversed the clamp and put it on in the other direction. And it seemed to just not flex so much. Now here's a step I do to put some epoxy in there. You probably don't have to with that tight of interference fit. But boy, it sure is cheap insurance. Then clean it up real well and check your work. Nice solid repair. It's a nice close up of that flat. Uh, don't forget to watch my other videos too, especially like uh, the new restoration series from all the uh, different parts I'm going to be sandblasting from our friends over at uh, Vapor Honing.